You wouldn't believe what I go through making these little videos. I'm suffering for my art here, people. Huh. I wanted to show you my sacred sweater. This is my new sacred sweater. What do you think of it? I got it at Value Village yesterday. I went there with my parents because they get the seniors discount. I don't yet because it's a fallen world. And apparently when you're almost 50, it doesn't count for the seniors discount, which is ridiculous. But anyway, I went with my parents so that they could buy uh, my stuff and get the discount. Um, and I bought this sweater and I bought two other sweaters too and a coat. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep this sweater for um, public occasions because it's pretty nice. You can see it's got some white in it. I don't want it to get dirty. If I wear it every day, it'll very soon look like I wear it every day. And so I'm going to keep this one for public appearances. This will be my public sacred sweater. I will have another sacred sweater that I will wear every day. And I got one of those yesterday too. So I'm set for sacred sweaters for the winter, I think. Anyway, maybe tomorrow I'll wear my everyday sacred sweater and you can tell me whether you approve or not. Okay, so um, I've figured out how much I have to tell you in the next three days before I turn 50 to finish telling my story and I've made a list. Um, moving in again to my mother-in-law's basement and taking care of her for the last eight years of her life. The Matthew Party. Tehillah Monday and the Sword That Pierces, Rock Lake and Green is the Color of You, Phil and Other Love Scenes, The TV and Movies Thing, Carolyn's Ministry Teams and God's Library, Ugh. Dancing Barefoot in the Park and Picking Up Prostitutes, Preaching in the Cemetery, The Holy Spirit, Writing the Unbook, Homeschooling My Kids, Changing My Name, my parents moving into my mother-in-law's basement and pretty much taking over. My grand bunny, secret place gurus, bed bugs and angel feathers, three YouTube videos that changed everything, and the blur book. So that's everything I should talk about in the next three days. Are you up to listening to all of that? I'm not sure I'm up to talking about it all. Not in three days. So I'm going to have to pick and choose. <sighs> I think in this video, I will I better talk about Tehillah Monday and the sword that pierces. Because I've talked so much about Grace Vineyard, which became Grace Christian Fellowship, which became Wild Honey, which is the best name for a church ever. Um, but... About the time that I um, Grace was winding down, I started to attend First Assembly. And First Assembly had a Monday evening service that was uh, specifically for young adults. But I snuck in and I loved it. The worship was amazing. There was, there was something going on at Tehillah Monday. And those of you who were there know exactly what I'm talking about. So picture it. They keep the doors to the sanctuary closed on Mondays right up until the band starts to play inside. And so all of us are crowded around the doors of the sanctuary waiting for them to open. And pretty soon we hear it, the band starting to play inside. Doom, 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 doom. And then they swing the doors of the sanctuary open and we all go rushing in. And most of us rush to the front. Uh, of the sanctuary and stand by the stage and worship our hearts out and I was one of the very first ones into the sanctuary every Monday night I absolutely loved it Jesus met me again and again and again at Tehillah Monday in ways that blew my socks off sometimes literally <laughs> um, and so after I was going to Tehillah for a long time I started attending First Assembly on Sunday mornings and I don't think it took me long to feel very comfortable. I was a part of the drama group at First Assembly and that was a lot of fun and uh, we did a few things, a few dramatic type things, um, being the drama group and all. But what I remember best about those services is that I was the woman 
at the very front of the sanctuary, right up against the stage, while everybody else was sitting in the pews like normal people. But that wasn't good enough for me. I had to be right up at the front, in front of everyone, like right up against the stage during worship while the worship band was up there doing their thing. And I know it seems, it seems demonstrative to be right up at the front like that when nobody else is. But to be honest, I did it because I wanted to feel alone. When I was just sitting in my pew or standing in the congregation with all of the other normal people, I was intensely aware of everyone else around me. I was aware of the people in front of me because I could see them. I was aware of people behind me because I could hear them. I was aware of everyone on each side of me. And um, it was fine, but I just wanted to be pressed up against God, you know. And so I found myself compelled. I really had very little to do with it. I was compelled to, when worship would start, I would walk up to the very front of the church and I would stand facing the stage with my knees pressed up against the stage and I felt like I was alone in the universe up there. I really did. Me and God, face to face. And so I'm sure that I came to be known as the lady up at the front every Sunday. And, um, but it is what it is. And sometimes I would just be feeling so much that I'd have to dance. And so sometimes I would dance up there. Sometimes I'd go to the side, you know, when I was feeling especially considerate, I would go to the side. But um, I was the lady at the front. Next time, I will tell you about the sword that pierces.